firstly, I guess, like, I want to talk a little bit about expectations. And I was, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about that with you. Like, do you, do you feel like when you go into a conversation in real life with somebody, like all the time, there's always some sort of expectation about how you are, who you are? Well, that's a really great question. It's funny because last night I like was telling, I was sitting at dinner with some friends and you know, it's not like I get people come up to me all the time. Like I look like every other 36 year old squat white woman in the world. So it's like, there's not, it's not like I'm being sort of like picked out of a crowd by adoring fans, but sometimes people recognize me. And oftentimes those conversations involve someone sharing something like incredibly personal Mm -hmm. that maybe intersects with something that I've experienced, possibly crying. And so it's like those, it's always so interesting to have those conversations and then just like return to the conversation that's happening at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. So someone came up to me last night and she was sharing the fact that she had been hospitalized for mental health issues. She was talking about that. At the same time, her girlfriend was like, my cousin went to camp with you and has a painting that she did of you in her bunk. And I was like, this is a lot to process (laughs) in one. (laughs) This is like a really a lot to process. And I was actually thinking about you because I was thinking about the way like everyone has a way that people react to them and you have a way that people react to you. It's actually like kind of different than who you are. How so? And I mean, it's either like like a woman screaming and throwing a uh, undergarment at you <laughs> or you're like, cut that out. Or, nah. uh, and then, or I it's told like, you one fucking story. Like, that is not like, a regular story, but go ahead. I know yeah. it's happened multiple times oh, or shit. it's like a man being like, my dude, like yeah, yeah. My, my dude, the Punisher yeah, yeah. or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> Neither of those people is who you are. Mm -hmm. You're like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you have obviously like you contain multitudes. Your Mm -hmm. house has many mansions Mm -hmm. to quote Edna St. Vincent Millay. But like you are also like an incredibly like tender, soft spoken person with a massive interior life. And so it must be interesting for you to have to like deal with those expectations and figure out how you're going to react in a way that like feels doesn't make you feel like you're stepping outside yourself all the time. Is there something that you feel like you need to defy the expectation or do you need to play against it or play towards it? Or do you really strive for just kind of being where you are while you're there? And what, what what's your outlook? I think on? I used to, and I love when people are like, you and John Bernthal are close friends. And I'm like, you know, like, I know that it doesn't make sense if you're comparing our bodies of work, but if you were to compare our inner lives, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that I feel like your this show touches on is that like the thing that connects people isn't necessarily how they project to the world. It's like Absolutely. how they feel, and like people would be surprised to know that like you and I actually respond to certain kinds of interpersonal situations in the same way. We have shared value system, like, and that's what makes a friend. And I think when I was younger, especially when girls was on I used to feel like I either had to prove to people that I wasn't that character and that I had like a level of adult maturity and polish that she didn't because I think especially when you're a woman playing someone on TV people conflate your two identities so intensely although you know what it's like to have your identity conflated with someone or I would feel like I had to come in and be this like really body funny like girl who could like handle the sex stories and didn't get tripped out and could deal with the boys club and like and I realized like neither of those things were me. Right. And it took some time away from playing that character and some time just away from public life for me to do the thing that you're talking about, which is just go into a conversation being the most present, authentic version of myself that's reacting to someone in a way that's hopefully empathic and genuine and also being true to my own needs, my own boundaries, my own sense of myself. But that was like, a lot of work and yep. it's something that I have to pay attention to every single day. You, you know, watching girls and being such a big fan of girls coming up as like a young man, I think to be able to go into your work with like real reckless abandonment and to be able to get, um, not to be afraid to be um, naked and raw and, and look for awkwardness, look for ugliness, look for flaws, look, you, you know, that's that's a, a real model of, of courage. What's a model of a courageous artist to you? And, and what do you think it, 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 it takes to be courageous in art well it's interesting because you said what did I expect when I met you and the reason that I was so excited to meet you was because like I had just always been captivated no matter where I saw you I started to have this feeling where I was like okay that's the person who like I remember everything from like Wolf of Wall Street to Sicario to Walking Dead like I would see you and I'd be like oh that's the person I'm drawn to because I can recognize that something really honest is happening right here and like it would be like I'd be watching a movie from 
2015 and suddenly it would be like I was in the 70s because you were just so like present and there and so but I was also surprised because I remember when my friend Eben started working with him, I was like tell him he's my favorite actor and when he was like he's a really big fan I was like oh what like the idea that you would be watching it and connect to what it was about but yes, then when I here. met you I wasn't sure what I would experience and I'd also had lots of experiences of like actors actor male actors who were not presenting as female be having a certain kind of ego around their work or what they did or having to kind of like like mask it in this kind of machismo or that but the thing is when I met you it was so clear to me that we were looking for the same thing which is like that we loved doing it because we loved things that we could that both scared us and that we could disappear into and then when we worked together I understood it even more because we both have this thing where even if something scares us, that makes us understand that we need to do it yep. if it scares us in the right way. Yep. And also that our only goal within that isn't to like meet a larger expectation or contribute to some like way we think our body of work is supposed to look, right. but to just <laughs> be there, deconstruct it and do the most the version of it that sort of like reflects the things that we have experienced in life that have challenged us, that have pained us. And so like in working with you, I understood even more deeply like the harmony between the way that, the way that we do things. Uh -huh. And I think that's always been my thing is like, if something scares me, if something gives me shame, I want to run towards Fuck it yeah. and explore it and open it up, Yeah, which was so, and that's why I knew that I wanted to write a part for you and that's why I knew that it was going to be in a story that was this sort of kind of about shame and about human about the ways that we do things that run counter to our value system and then how we kind of like relegate that to ourselves and so and those were the questions I was uniquely excited to explore with you because I knew that we were approaching them the same and when you way. were doing girls and you were you know <laughs> and, and you were just sort of like especially in the beginning did that like can you talk a little bit about the, the was there fear there yeah I mean I think part of the way that I sold it to myself was I was like and I just said this to someone yesterday I was like oh I mean I know it's on HBO but like how many people see that like 350 like it'll be like a little bit more than seeing a YouTube video that I put out but like not as many as see anything else like I thought it was gonna be like maybe 300 like-minded women yeah, yeah, yeah. would see the show like the yeah. idea that there would become conversation about it or then conversation about the conversation was yeah. so out i didn't even let myself contemplate that right and also because i think it's important to make what work. if you had like what if somebody had said hey you know this could be this i think i probably would have been like i would have been like no 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 that's impossible and i also think if someone had really shown me what it was going to look like I don't think like if someone had had like a crystal ball and they'd been like, this is what it's going to look like when you put this work out. I don't know if I would have been, I don't know if I would have known to be scared because I wouldn't, because if they couldn't have said what, this is what it's going to feel like. Do you know what I mean? I, I do. I guess because my question is. is but like, I was really terrified. And the part that I was terrified about wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm going to be naked on television. It wasn't necessarily like, oh, people are going to see this character who is a reflection of certain parts of my life that have scared me it was much more about like I want to prove that I can that I can do this I don't want the people on set to feel like they're betting on the wrong person it was much more about inter my fears were much more around interpersonal expectations uh -huh. and being able to achieve it artistically and creatively like I went in every day very afraid of failure but afraid of failure on this almost like technical level. And, and in the moment, right? Like the driver was like, I, if I'm asking that person to do it, I got to do it too, right? And yes. I guess my question is like, is courage, like do you, do you feel like, you know, you, 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 in order to like really achieve, or to do something courageous, you almost have to ignore ramification. You almost have to ignore, if you, and because when I look at a firefighter who runs into a burning building, right? Like that person, you could say like, look, certain people are wired towards that. And it's something I talk about with artists all the, all the time, yeah. because again, in the interconnectivity of all this, if you're talking to a special forces soldier, if you're talking to a pro fighter, I mean, look, walking into the ring, like every time you do it, you're fucking scared. Like yeah. every time you do it, but it's the people next to you, it's the people that you trained with, it's the people, it's, it's for whatever reason you're doing it. Yep. It's like right there in the moment. And I've seen some of the most hardened people in the world that have like really, really, you know, 
really, really, uh, y- you know, had had real time with like real violence, put a camera yeah. on their face and and they completely will. And like it, it, it's not about equating these things or whatever it is, but courage is courage. And I and 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 I, I guess like because I, I, I really think now in art and something I want to get into a little bit later, but like I think now in art, there's so many things that play that make you consider the ramifications, that make you consider, are you gonna offend this person, are you gonna offend this person, and can you truly be courageous if you're thinking about things that are gonna come down the line? That's such a beautifully phrased question. Like when you were talking about like people who run into a burning building, like I remember being at summer camp when I was like 13 and every girl was jumping off of this really, really, like a, I don't know, like 100 foot rock into a pond right and I was like we could die and they were all like but it's fun and I was like we could die you guys (laughs) and like I couldn't do that I just remember feeling so ashamed because I left and everyone had jumped off the rock and I'd been like no way like that's just I I can't I can't let go the way that you guys are and experience this idea that like but if we hit the water the right way it'll be fun because I can't stop thinking about but if we hit the water the wrong way we'll be paralyzed and but in my creative life, I'm almost like pathologically unable to ignore ramifications or in like expressing myself at times I've been pathologically unable to ignore ramifications. And so it's interesting when you say that thing about like courage is courage, but we all feel it in different ways. And something that was very, when you ask like, what's a model of courage to me, you know, the thing that I always said when people were like, it's so brave for you to get naked on television. I was like, it's not brave to do something that doesn't scare you. And that never scared me just because it scares you and you're watching. But like, there's other things that really do scare me that are, you know, you know, the things that scare me, disappointing people going into a conversation and hurting someone, expressing myself and putting down a boundary. And so, and my father will sometimes be like, how are you? Like, I remember recently he was like, how are you able to like make a movie like Sharp Stick and put it out and not care how people feel or get naked on television and you literally just can't tell your friend how you feel and I was like (laughs) it's just that yeah Yeah. and I guess for me models of courage are like when I see somebody do something that is so like like I watch a lot of Dateline just because it relaxes me and (laughs) but I constantly will be watching these people who like you know experience something shocking in their life they're they you know an intruder comes in their home whatever and they practice these acts of like wild bravery that come from almost like you're like where does that come from inside of you almost nowhere and I was also thinking about that recently in relation to my mom because like I was raised in a house of artists so expressing yourself was a concept but my mom was raised in a house of like you know post-world war ii Uh, Jewish family where they were trying desperately to fit into this idea of like Norman Rockwell Americana and my mom came out and was basically like goth and like couldn't not be goth and to me I'm like you're unbelievable like you were just like you just busted out of that with no fear about telling everyone your life was going to look different than what they thought it was going to so in a way I just kind of followed this path that was already set out by my family but I look at my mom or other like specifically female artists, but tons of, I mean, I look at, you know, Gertrude Stein and Alice B. Toklas who announced in the, you know, just were publicly queer in the 1920s. Like these people who were able to express their identities despite every force that was oppressing them to me are unbelievable models of courage. Of courage. Of courage. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's John, Bam Bam the Dog. Uh, First, on behalf of both of us and everybody from the Real Ones team, I just want to sincerely thank you guys for for, for tuning in. The folks that I bring on the show, they're family to me, and uh, being able to tell their stories and bringing you into their world is something I'm I'm just super proud of and, uh, again, grateful that you guys tune in. We've decided we want to take things just a step further. We're going to introduce a Patreon community. And basically what that means is if you become part of this community, look, I already bored Bam Bam. If you want to become part of this community, you're going to be able to hear episodes early and all that, ad-free and all that good stuff. But there's all this behind-the-scenes footage, all this stuff that we've shot 
um, that really brings you into the folks that we've had on the show, really brings you into their world. You're gonna be able to do live chats with me and the folks that I bring on the show to talk about their world, talk about the issues that they're dealing with, about their triumphs and their tragedies. Just go to Patreon slash Real Ones on this website that you see right there, right on the screen, that's right in front of you. This whole idea was um, something about building bridges and, 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 and bringing people together and um, bringing folks that often don't get the mic and, and giving the mic to them. So the fact that you guys tune in means the world. Anyways, again, thank you. Uh, be good to each other out there. Rock and roll.